805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Sarah Whitmer, and Sarah is with the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Cinder. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to talk with you about the work that we're doing at the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. Good. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm excited to hear. You have a lot of changes happening. You have really important work. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'd love to hear all about it. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. So to start with, I'd love to say that the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation is a small local nonprofit with big global goals. Um, namely, our main goal is to educate and train people in being as capable in peace skills as they are in reading and writing skills. And I'll talk more about what that means and what That's that looks a great like. Goal. Well, thank you. Um, but I'd, I'd love to give you a little bit of background about NAPF and how we got to that point. Um, we have, a, I think, an interesting story that's uh, unique and, and at the same time very typical for Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. um, so nuclear, the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation was founded in 1982, nearly 40 years ago. Gosh. And we were founded close to the height of the Cold War. Mm. Um, by 1986, there were 70,000 nuclear weapons in the world, and we only needed a small fraction of that number to obliterate our planet several times over. Mm. So a few concerned uh, professors and community members mm -hmm. here in Santa Barbara were saying, you know, we can't go to sleep at night knowing that that threat's out there. Um, you're knowing that the world that we love sure. and cherish could be, you know, obliterated in an instant. Um, what can we do about that? Yeah. Um, so they started the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. And I think in some ways that's very typical of our culture here in Santa Barbara and our values mm -hmm. um, that you know, this, this group of concerned individuals were saying, you know, we are, we care about our planet, we care about our community, um, we're grateful for you know, what, what our community can, can do for us and brings to us. You know, I think Santa Barbara being so close to the ocean and having the mountains and you know, just being so in tune with nature, um, there was this awareness that you know, nuclear weapons were this incredible threat to some yes, very beautiful, yes. meaningful things. Um, so with all of that, NAPF was founded to focus exclusively on nuclear weapons policy and on making nuclear weapons illegal. Um, and so we started our work with educating and advocating for policy work that would make those things possible, making nuclear weapons completely illegal. Um, and we started working at the United Nations. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, we did quite a bit of work. So at really the UN. working on a global. Yeah, um, yeah. It was interesting that we, over the years, have had a lot of local, up to you know, very international work that we've done. Mm -hmm. You know, at the UN, for example, we've worked on some treaties that were passed in support of nuclear weapons elimination. Um, in 2017, we helped to draft the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Um, and from that, our partner organization, the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, won the Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so that was a huge success and something to really celebrate that you know, our, our little nonprofit here in Santa Barbara was helping to make that happen. Um, the majority of the world's countries are in support of that treaty. So that was very you know, exciting. Yeah. And you know, at the same time, we've done work on the state level, on the federal level, and then even here in, in Santa Barbara, we've done some work on um, exclusively on nuclear weapons as well. Um, the city of Santa Barbara last year became a city in support of the Treaty of the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, mm -hmm. um, or a nuclear-free city. Um, Barcelona was the latest city to join that uh, that group. So that's it's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very exciting. It's it's cool that we are um, setting an example here in Santa Barbara. Um, two years ago, or, or two summers ago, Assembly Member Monique Limon actually mm -hmm. helped us to pass AJR 33, or so, uh, Assembly Joint Resolution 33. And that was calling on California to, or uh, that was calling on the federal government, at least, to support the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Um, and through that, California became the first state to support okay. this idea of eliminating nuclear weapons. Um, 
So in a lot of ways, I think California and Santa Barbara in particular have been <laughs> really good examples um, for you know, our, I, I think, our, our state and our country as a whole and, and our, our planet as well, um, to care for those things that, mm -hmm. um, that matter to us and to you know, take, take care of things that are near and dear to us. Wow, so it's um, not like most cities or even most states for that matter have the equivalent of a nuclear age peace foundation. It's really unusual. Right. Yeah, yeah. There are a, a small group of nonprofits across the country that are doing similar work to us. Okay. Um, but we are really one of the few that has been a consistent voice for, um, mm -hmm. for change and for, for peace, um, you know, hopeful and effective and, and real and lasting peace. Um, specifically by focusing on eliminating nuclear weapons and, mm -hmm. and nuclear warfare. Um, but from that, yes. so now in 2020, we've had some interesting changes that I think are, are um, mm -hmm. you know, speaking to the age that we're in now with you know, many changes technologically and, and um, politically and just the way that people relate to the sure. world around them now. Um, so at, the, at NAPF, we are now focusing a lot more on this idea of educating people to uh, live at peace at home and, and you know, from there to have that ripple out into the community. Um, and we focus on that through our peace literacy program. Hmm. That's a great way to say it. Thank you. Yeah, so our peace literacy program, uh, the, the concept is that um, we have their skills to be able to live peacefully that we should be you know, developing and practicing and focusing on in the same way that we teach students how to develop math skills and writing mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. sure. um, my colleague Paul K. Chappelle, who developed this idea of peace literacy, is maybe the last person that you would imagine would work at a peace foundation. Um, he went to West Point and then served in the Army for 10 years. Oh, and golly. he did a tour in Iraq. Uh, yeah, and so from that, Paul started to ask, you know, why is it that soldiers are so well trained in warfare and in the skills that mm -hmm, are required mm -hmm. for that, but we don't really seem to you know, break peace down into skills in a similar manner. We don't um, have a realistic sense of how to educate people to, to live in a way that develops those skills and, and encourages them to practice them. Um, I think a great illustration of that is Paul talks about how um, if you showed a bunch of students a video of Michael Jordan playing basketball, mm -hmm. you wouldn't then send them out to recess and expect them to play basketball in the same way that Michael Jordan does. You, know, you right. wouldn't be surprised if they you know, couldn't play very well just from watching a video. However, um, so much of our um, education around peace comes from you know, maybe a short video on Martin Luther King Jr., maybe <laughs> a, you know, a, a, a little lesson on him. <laughs> But we don't really jump into the skills that are needed to, to learn how to live life as he did. Yeah, really good point. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's, um, that's a really good analogy. And so through peace literacy, that's something that we're really trying to break down. You know, what are the skills that people need to learn how to develop to live at peace? Um, and so, you know, we start really with focusing on basic human needs. You know, what are what are the building blocks of a society mm -hmm. where people are um, living at peace with one another, um, and how do we do, how do we um, better nurture mm -hmm. those building blocks? Really. So you probably um, do a lot of collaboration, maybe with the schools, with yeah. youth organizations, with other social service. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So one thing that is really exciting about our peace literacy curriculum, I think, is that we have a network of teachers across the country mm. who in one way or another have heard about peace literacy and are now volunteering their time to help us perfect our curriculum. Wow. Yeah. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. And I mean, for so many of these teachers, I'm sure you, you know, would, would understand that you know, teachers are so spread thin already mm -hmm, as it is. Sure. So they have so many expectations and um, requirements already placed on them. And so for these teachers in their you know, spare time mm -hmm. um, to be devoting so much effort to helping us develop our peace literacy curriculum really, I think, speaks to the importance of it um, and to, to the fact that they recognize the need for it in their classrooms. Um, so our peace literacy curriculum has been translated into French and into Spanish so far, and we're looking wow. to translate it into other languages as well. And it's been adapted for classrooms as young as kindergarten. Mm. Um, we're actually working with some organizations to see if we can make it go even younger, like mm -hmm. pre-K. Um, and it's been used sure. in classrooms up to adult and higher education. 
Um, we do some professional development trainings as uh -huh. well with uh, just business professionals and how to bring peace literacy skills into their workplaces. That is great. Yeah. Wow. So now, um, David Krager mm -hmm. was the founder, a yes. founder. Yeah. And now you've changed leadership. You want to talk about that a little bit? Definitely, yeah. So for 38 years, wow. David Krieger was the president of the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. And he was a relentless and committed voice to, you know, specifically to, you know, to peace and to um, finding ways to make the world a more just and peaceful place. Mm -hmm. And he still is that voice, absolutely. Sure. Um, he's now our president emeritus and he's on oh. our board. That's um, great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's still, you know, a, a guiding force mm -hmm. in the work that we're doing. But he's passed the baton on to uh, my colleague Rick Wayman, who's now our CEO. And Rick worked with David for 12 years. Oh gosh, isn't um, that great? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that that's such a, a meaningful and important um, mm -hmm. transition that uh, you know, Rick was able to be mentored by David for so long. Um, and now yeah. we're you know, we're on to a new chapter, and David is very much supporting the growth of that new chapter. And you know, Rick has just jumped into really supporting and um, taking peace literacy further. That's great that they're working together. Yeah, I mean, kind of like a team. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so our our mission statement now is a little bit more broad. Um, okay. We say that we equip and train people of all ages and backgrounds to solve the most dangerous technological, social, and psychological issues of our time and to survive and thrive in the 21st century. That's great. And that really living peace mm -hmm. or peace literacy, as yeah, you say, yeah. that really is the foundation of that idea. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, I think a huge uh, just development that we've had in our work, something that we really had to take a hard look at ourselves to better understand, is that nuclear weapons are a symptom of some much deeper issues in our society. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we really firmly believe that so many issues that are grabbing the attention of our planet today are interrelated. I mean, when we talk about climate change, when we mm -hmm. talk about racism, when we talk about issues with sexism or trauma even, mm -hmm. They're all related to, you know, they're all symptoms of this much deeper issue, which mm -hmm. has to do with you know, social and psychological issues that go untreated. Gosh. Well, and now, so Sarah, the, the Peace Foundation is a nonprofit 501c3, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, yes. And so I'll bet on your website there's a Donate Now button, and somebody can go on there is. and yes. make a donation, or I don't know, do you use volunteers at all? Do you? Oh, yeah. Are there ways that people can get involved with the yes, organization? Yes, there are absolutely ways that people can get involved. I think one of the most wonderful ways that we have volunteers get involved is, you know, so we have events throughout the year. Um, we have an annual Sadako Peace Day in okay. the summer. Oh, yeah. um, and that's just a wonderful music and commemorative event around um, remembering when the nuclear weapons were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki mm. in 1945. Um, and you know, wanting that to never happen again. And that's a really wonderful community event. Um, and then we have our annual Evening for Peace in the fall. Um, we tend to have a lecture in the spring called our, our Kelly Lecture on Humanity's Future. Wow. And so you know, those are great ways that we try to engage the community. And, that you know, is really yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And we always welcome people to you know, even just stop by our office um, yeah. to talk with us about how they envision peace fitting into their lives. Um, how they envision this peace literacy idea of really taking root. Um, we have, you know, again, from, from engineers to mm -hmm. you know, kindergarten students, we have people across the country who are really um, passionate about peace literacy and learning how to adapt it into yeah. to their daily life. That's great. Well, Sarah, we have uh, a little less than a minute left. Is right. there any special message you'd like to give folks that you haven't said? Thank you for asking. Well, okay, I think with one minute left, what I'd say is please feel free to check out our website, which oh, is wagingpeace.org. And our curriculum website for peace literacy is peaceliteracy.org. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good to know. Yes, and we have all of our, our curriculum there free for educators, and we want to oh. keep it that way. Gosh. So, yeah. 
another reason to donate. Absolutely, yes. Sarah, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you, Cinder. And thank you for this wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you. Gosh. Thank you. I appreciate it immensely. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.